The following is a story from Gatewave Radio. Gatewave Radio is a free audio service for listeners who are blind, visually impaired, or reading disabled. Learn more at gatewave.org. There's always a special bond between a dog and its master, but never more so than with the more than 7,000 guide dogs across America. Hundreds of them got their training not far from our Gatewave headquarters in downtown Brooklyn at the Guide Dog Foundation in Long Island, New York. Our reporter, Renee Wunderlich, hit the streets to learn firsthand about some new training techniques and why some humans choose canine over cane. I meet Tim Hornick walking into a coffee shop in Huntington, Long Island. He's got a beard, a Chicago Bears baseball cap, and a black Labrador retriever. Sit. Oh, Barney, down. Tim says he's still getting used to working with his new guide dog, Barney. He loves that Barney lets him pick up the pace as he travels around town. I have a uh, normally a faster uh, step that I like to take that I haven't taken in years. So being able to walk at that speed that I'm used to again is fantastic, and Barney is able to do that with me. The 35-year-old PhD student is part of a small group out today with their newly matched guide dogs. And for Tim, it's not just Barney he's getting used to, but blindness itself. Yeah, I was um, shot in the head by a sniper in 2004, and that was in uh, Baghdad. Tim expects the biggest benefit from his new companion to be not his own mobility, but his relationship with his young daughter, Abigail. Keeping up with her is challenging. So I just can't do it with just a cane. It's very hard when I have a five-year-old sprinting. I don't care how well your cane tapping skills are, you're not going to keep up with a sprinting little girl. <laughs> Tim is almost done with his two-week training. Soon he and his fellow classmates will be going home with their new guide dogs. That's about half the length of a traditional training program, thanks to some new techniques. Wells Jones is the CEO of the Guide Dog Foundation. Where they used to be here for 25 days to learn to work with a guide dog, now they're here for 14 days. Wells says the new schedule means more people seeking guide dogs can be matched and trained. And head trainer Sebastian McPherson tells me there's something revolutionary going on in the guide dog world called positive reinforcement training. Because we have been what we call traditionally training dogs, uh, which would just be a leash and collar, and then the dog does something, you praise it, it does something wrong, you give it a correction with the leash and collar. But now, instead of a firm tug on the leash, trainers say students are only rewarding their dogs for good behavior. Times change, and the public's point of view sees people correcting dogs. It's, it doesn't become very nice for the people in their minds seeing a dog being corrected. So now there is a treat, or a dog will hear this. This is the sound of a clicker. That click means the dog's done a good job. We're now trying to train all our senior staff. And the client training has changed as much as the dog training has changed as well. Good boy. Nice job. Across the street, another new owner is training her dog. Caitlin Mongello is a 26-year-old social worker from Stratford, Connecticut. This is her first time with the new training but this is her second guide dog. I came in knowing what I expect out of a guide dog. I knew how it felt to walk with a dog, but it was a little different too, and sometimes is a little hard because you're working with a whole new dog who's not your first dog. Born blind, Caitlin had some sight restored through a dozen operations on her eyes before she turned two. But at 17, she lost that vision to glaucoma. That's when she got her first guide dog, Laser, who's retired now. She's training with Charlie, an even-tempered yellow lab. Okay, Charlie, forward. Both Caitlin and Tim tell me the best part about the whole process is more than getting their dog. It's getting their independence. It's helping me travel a lot more effectively and independently than just using the cane wood. For me, it's, it's, you know, it's the best thing I've done because it just, it, it's so much easier to move around in space. You just feel, or I just feel at least, there's no reason I can't do what I want to do because I have someone who's looking out for me and making sure, all right, we'll get there, all okay. Um. In New York, I'm Renee Wonderlich for Gatewave, audio for independent living. <laughs> The foundation is funded by charitable donations. They cover all costs, raising and training the puppies, and room, board, and transportation for the students and their dogs. You can learn more at guidedog.org 
or call 1-800-548-4337. We'll repeat that number at the end of the program. 1-800-548-4337. 